In recent years, millions of observers around the world have begun learning of the extraordinary Earth-Sun connection and its profound influence on the Earth's climate and weather. This connection is far more dynamic than traditional solar physics and planetary science have ever envisioned. For nearly four years, Ben Davidson, the researcher behind the Suspicious Observer's YouTube channel, has conducted a remarkable investigation into a variety of scientific fields, including the Electric Universe theory. Through his online presence, Ben provides data on the daily solar environment and the electromagnetic interactions between the Earth, Sun, and Galaxy. Ben will be a featured speaker at the forthcoming Thunderbolts conference, Paths of Discovery, taking place June 25th to 29th in Phoenix, Arizona. We asked Ben to provide a brief introduction and overview of his talk, intriguingly titled, Does the Sun Trigger Large Earthquakes? Since we started really looking at the sun uh, in detail day to day, along with the comings and goings of earthquake events here on the planet, it became clear that focusing on these two sectors of science day to day could yield uh, an entirely new field of opportunities in terms of discovery and in terms of being able to do everything from hopefully predicting earthquakes one day to uh, really understanding not just our planet but our sun and the forces that uh, are interactive over great distances especially through space. Everything from the energy that the sun puts out to the magnetic fields that make up our star can potentially affect earthquakes here on the planet. Since 2011, we have been tracking the ebb and flow of six magnitude earthquakes and above to something called coronal holes. Over the long period of time, there should be about three six magnitude earthquakes per week, but that is very rarely the case in any given week. Usually there's none or one or two, or there's six or seven or more. And it is that ebb and flow back and forth that really uh, is tied to the coronal hole activity on the sun. Now, exactly why this is the case, we've developed a number of hypotheses, but uh, in truth, we're a little bit like in the position that our ancestors were in when they knew the sun was going to go up and then the sun was going to go down. But they thought it was an, you know, they thought it was a living, jealous, capricious being that had intricate uh, effects in their daily lives. They understood the pattern and what was going to happen, but they didn't really get the mechanism. Well, I'd like to think we're a little bit further along than that, but still, uh, we're just making guesses. A coronal hole is an area where the magnetic fields on the sun do not loop in and out of the surface like we see with sunspots, but rather when they come out of the surface of the sun, they stream off into space. And so when a coronal hole is facing Earth, there are a number of effects that the Earth feels from this. First, it is like the sun is pointing an extra strong magnet at the Earth. Now, whether this has an effect on a local level with large pieces of iron or quartz, or whether it's on a larger scale level as Earth is a sphere magnet with a north and south magnetic pole, that is uh, something yet to be determined. The interplanetary magnetic fields that stream out from the coronal hole might interact with the Earth-Sun connection, what NASA refers to as the magnetic portal through which flux transfer events occur. It's also possible that the alphan waves that we see emanating from coronal holes play a role in this. After all, NASA has uh, shown and proven that the alphan waves that are generated by these coronal holes are far more efficient at transferring the sun's energy to our planet than is the surrounding area of the sun. This is something that we're going to be talking about a bit more. The mechanism of how coronal holes could possibly be tied to earthquakes, and we'll look at a bunch of examples. Another way in which the sun is tied to earthquake activity is through the polar magnetic fields. Just like Earth has a north and south magnetic pole where the magnetic fields wrap in and out of the planet and around to create our shield, the magnetosphere, well, the sun has these too. They start at the sun and they go out past Pluto. And when they come down, they often ride along the heliospheric current sheet of solar wind through which the Earth is gliding as it orbits around the sun. And for the first time ever in the history of attempts of uh, people trying to correlate solar activity to earthquake activity, uh, we have a very significant 
statistical correlation. And it's not just a correlation, it is a dependence. We found that when the magnetic fields, the polar magnetic fields of the sun are at their strongest or when they are reversing polarity, positive to negative, negative to positive, that is when the earth has the largest earthquakes. And that study was, uh, the math was done by the statistics department at the Ohio State University. And both myself and Dr. Kong Papu Yen worked on the space weather, sun, earth, seismicity analysis of, of the deal. And interestingly, this isn't with that ebb and flow of six magnitude earthquakes. This is with only the largest earthquakes on the planet, eight magnitude and higher. And so we're going to be discussing a lot of the ways that we might have coupling events between this energy and magnetic fields from space and the ground below our feet. There's actually a phenomenally impressive amount of work done by just a few number of people, but they really help illuminate how this mechanism right, uh, might be triggering these earthquakes. We'll also be talking about how the energy of solar flares, uh, the magnetic changes that come along with something called a solar sector boundary uh, in the solar wind, and a number of other things may be proliferative to earthquake activity as well. This is something that uh, is not an entirely new science. Uh, scientists have tried to correlate some of these things before, but with some of our newer abilities to watch the sun and understand uh, how it is interacting with our planet, it's really changing our ability to see how earthquakes are affected by it. Based on a number of factors, on the morning of April 24, 2015, Ben issued a heightened earthquake warning. Was the basis of this warning confirmed by the subsequent tragic event in Nepal? Well, you know, on the morning of April 24th, uh, we issued an enhanced earthquake warning based on a number of the aforementioned factors being present on the sun, but also because uh, of a planetary factor. There's really only one thing we use uh, to forecast earthquakes that doesn't necessarily deal with the sun, and that is when there are planetary conjunctions or oppositions that involve the Earth. And uh, at that time, both uh, Mercury and Mars were in a line with the Earth. There was a coronal hole that was facing Earth, there was a lot of solar flare energy, and there was a solar sector boundary coming in the solar wind, which uh, really heralds a, a sharp change in the near-Earth magnetic situation, so to speak. So we did call for that enhanced earthquake warning the morning of April 24th, and you know I can't say that we expected something as devastating as what happened in Nepal, but... Uh, this was certainly the most significant earthquake warning we've had this year, uh, the first time all of these factors have been there together. Um, normally, the coronal holes are our primary earthquake factor, uh, and this one was only uh, moderately significant, but when we added in everything else that was going on on the sun, uh, really everything that we normally look at uh, was offering us a big check mark, a, a yes uh, for that day, and so that's why we called the enhanced earthquake uh, warning. And, um, you know, it, it's in a way nice to get an affirmation that we may be on the right track with some of these things, but at the same time, it is a, it is a terrible affirmation. You never want to see, uh, you never want to see it come with something like that. 